This is a map of Europe in 1850. This is a map of Europe in 1863. As you may notice, as I switch back and forth between these two maps, very little changes in Germany in this time period. Or so it seems. Because as we zoom in, we can see much, much more detail. In 1815, there are 41 states in the German Confederation, and in this video, we will be following their territorial evolution up to the forming of the German Empire, showing even the most pointless border changes that happened in the era. Let's dive in. Our first territorial shift comes in 1826, when the saxe gotha line of the Wettin dynasty became extinct, leading to the Ernestine reshuffling of the territories in that region, leading to this radical change. Wow! The next change again concerns the state of saxe coburg and Gotha, which sold this small province of Lichtenberg to the Prussians. The reason for this is simple. The great distance between the core saxe coburg and Gotha lands and Lichtenberg. Additionally, the rulers of the small state were spooked by the Hambacher Festival, a demonstration for German unity and democracy, which happened very close to Lichtenberg in the Bavarian Rhineland. The next one is the first that would majorly change the balance of power in Germany. Hanover had been in a personal union with the British ever since 1740, uniting the two kingdoms under a single monarch. Yet, in 1837, upon the ascension of Queen Victoria in Britain, this personal union would break as under Hanoverian law, a female monarch was impossible. Thus, the fourth largest German state was now free to choose their own destiny. The next change would come from outside of the German Confederation itself. The Kingdom of the Netherlands was not itself a part of the Confederation, but they did hold the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg and the Duchy of Limburg, both of which were part of the Confederation. During the Belgian War of Independence, the Belgians took control over both of these territories, but no official borders changed hands until 1839, when the Treaty of London was signed, which recognized Belgian independence, returning Limburg and Luxembourg to the Dutch, though Luxembourg was cut in half, divided between the Dutch and the Belgians. This would mark the only time that the Confederation shrank in size. The next change is not directly related to the German Confederation, but it does concern the expansion of Austria, its biggest member. Since 1815, this small city-state here, Krakow, existed as a free city jointly controlled by the three major powers around it. After the Krakow Uprising of 1846, where independence fighters fought for an independent Poland, the great powers decided that it was time for the city to be annexed into Austria to stop the city-state from serving as a hotbed for Polish nationalism. Next up come the revolution years of 1848, which would lead to a couple of border changes in Germany. First, German revolutionaries in Holstein would rise up against Danish rule. While not an official border change, Prussia would support rebels fighting for independence in this region for years. On the other side of Germany, we have the twin principalities of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen and Hohenzollern Hechingen, these small regions down here. They were held by the Hohenzollern dynasty, the same dynasty that ruled over Prussia. Following revolutions in Germany in 1848, the security of these two small states came into question as they were simply too small to defend themselves. The Prussians were initially reluctant to seize this small, far-off region, but upon realizing that if they didn't, Württemberg likely would, in 1850, Prussia annexed both of these small states. In 1852, we once again turn our attention to the Holstein dispute, as it would end in a German defeat. Following great power intervention, the Danes would return to their German holdings, but, in exchange, they had the promise to never merge Holstein and Lauenburg into Denmark proper, respecting their separate status as a part of the German Confederation. Then we have some dynastic issues with the Ascania dynasty, the rulers over three small states in Anhalt. In 1853, the ruling line over this small state, anhalt köthen became extinct, and as such, it was reunited with their brother principality of anhalt dessau But now, it's time for some real major shakeups. An alliance between France and Sardinia has declared war on Austria, and following Austria's defeat, the Sardinians annexed Lombardia for themselves, following it up with the formation of an Italian state weakening Austria's southern holdings. But let's be honest, who cares? You're not here for Italy, I know what you're really here for. More information on the dynastic shifts of Anhalt. This time, the line of anhalt bernburg would become extinct leading to anhalt dessau annexing these lands too, becoming now simply known as Anhalt. But, while the Holstein dispute was seemingly solved decades ago, the Germans still didn't like the current arrangement. 
Upon the death of the Danish king, the German Confederation didn't like any of the candidates to the throne. To make matters worse, in 1863, the Danes passed the November Constitution, binding Holstein closer to Denmark than what the Germans deemed acceptable. And so, invasion. Prussia and Austria jointly fought the Danes, and with the war settled, Prussia gained Lauenberg and Schleswig, while Austria gained Holstein. Though, the entire territory was supposed to be jointly occupied by the two German powers. This would lead to a crisis in 1866, as Austria allowed Holstein to call an assembly, which Prussia considered a breach of their joint sovereignty. Tensions escalated, both sides were preparing for war, and Prussia signed an alliance with the Italians. This war would see Germany divided against itself. But despite Austria's defeat in this war, the Prussians would only seize Holstein from the Austrians, though they would also lose Venice to Italy, or, more accurately, the Austrians would give Venice to France, since they felt like Italy hadn't earned it, after which France gave it to Italy. In North Germany though, Prussia would annex several states which had aligned themselves with Austria, a massive expansion. The other German states would retain their independence, while the German Confederation was also dissolved. To replace this confederation, Prussia would form and dominate the North German Confederation, binding the remaining Northern German states together. Then, as the final and perhaps biggest border shift, we have the Franco-Prussian War. German Chancellor Bismarck expertly crafted a situation where France declared war on Prussia, leading to even the Southern German states siding with the Prussians against this external threat. The Prussians would march over Northern France, crushing the French armies. In the Palace of Versailles, the symbol of French prestige, the Prussians would announce the creation of the German Empire, leading to the unification of the German states while also seizing Alsace-Lorraine from the French. So, to recap, in 1815 the German Confederation had 41 members, and by 1871 only 4 would be left standing. Luxembourg, Austria, Prussia, now Germany, and Liechtenstein, the small state down here. Most of the territory of the former confederacy was now part of the new German Empire or still a part of the Austrian Empire. The only territories which slipped away from the two major German states were the previously mentioned Liechtenstein, the Duchy of Limburg which remained with the Dutch, half of Luxembourg which was annexed into Belgium and finally the other half of Luxembourg which was still ruled by the Dutch in a personal union before achieving full independence. With that, I do believe that I have covered all border changes concerning the German Confederation between 1815 and 1871. So, this is where I'll end this video. Thank you all for watching, consider leaving a like and a comment to support the content, subscribe for two more videos every single week, and to continue watching, click on one of the two videos on screen now. Again, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.